We can look at this process also for tropical regions. If you think about our previous graph, um, again from chapter 7, and think about what's going on in the tropics, again between 23.5 degrees north and 23.5 degrees south, centered over the equator, pretty much sunlight remains the same most of the year. Now this isn't going to be true exactly for everywhere in the tropics, but by and large the amount of light falling on the tropics is the same. It doesn't change a whole lot. As a result, we almost have a continuous summertime situation, if you want to think about it that way. And when we think about the tropics, we think about summertime. But we have a permanently stratified water column with this equatorial or this tropical thermocline. We never get deep mixing. And as a result, nutrient concentrations remain low throughout most of the year, or throughout the entire year, in tropical climates. So while we have lots of sunlight in the tropics, we have very little nutrients. It's why places like Hawaii have blue water all year long. It's why the Caribbean has blue water most of the, most of the year, except for maybe when hurricanes come by or some really large storm events that mix the water up. And then you get a slight bloom in those cases. But in the absence of any of those perturbing storms and major big events, the tropics pretty much stay the same year round. That's why people go to the tropics, because the weather is the same all year long. We have relatively uh, constant concentrations of phytoplankton, relatively constant concentrations of zooplankton, and I should say low concentrations of phytoplankton, um, and pretty much stable conditions through all of the year, through all of the seasons in the tropical zones. It's this clear water because of the absence of phytoplankton that really allows corals to grow. And one of the problems in regions where hotels have been built and in tropical regions where hotels have been built and other kinds of development are releasing nutrients into the water is that those activities, those human activities, are causing the water to become green. And green water is terrible for cor corals because corals need sunlight to grow. They need that clear blue water to gain sunlight for the symbiotic algae so that the coral reefs can grow. And so the blue water is terrific for the growth of corals. It's when we kind of mess up that system and add some nutrients to it, either through sewage or agricultural runoff or other kinds of things, that we can then perturb this tropical system and begin to deteriorate the condition of coral reefs. So again, a picture is worth thousands of words and this simple illustration can explain a lot of different things that we're interested in in the tropics.